Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Whitman Think Tank, Whitman Think Tank TV. I'm, my name is Erin Johnson. I'm the founder of the Whitman Think Tank. And here with me today is Marie Laylor. She is the co-chair of the Whitman Historic Commission, Historical Commission, and John Campbell, who is the chair of the um, Whitman Society, Historic <laughs> Society. Um, what we're really talking about today is the, the potential that we're going to create a museum in Whitman with an historical focus. But first, can you please tell me what the Historical Commission does, Marie? The Historical Commission's mission statement is to identify, identify, preserve, and understand the historical resources that the town of Whitman has. Okay, and I'm on the Cultural Council myself, and I like this idea from a cultural point of view. Um, we're kind of a small committee right now, but I like the idea of kind of using all of our resources to work on this, if that's okay with you, John. <laughs> He's in the Historical Society. So you're really the, the person who's kind of in charge of this at this point, right? Yeah, the Historical Society is, uh, we have approximately 30 members. Oh, wow. And uh, what we do or are trying to do is to recreate the museum that we once had. Okay. We have approximately 5,000 items wow. of okay. history of, the, of Whitman. Mm -hmm. uh, his, Whitman was a very industrial town years ago and has mm -hmm. gone into kind of like a bedroom community now. Yeah. So what we want to do is show the children of new people in the town of Whitman what we were like 50 years and beyond mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now years ago you said it was industrial. They produced a lot of shoes here, right? Was that the main thing they, they made in Whitman? That was primarily the main thing, but mm -hmm. there were so many industries that supplied the shoe mm -hmm. companies with the uh, shanks, shoe shanks, mm -hmm. we had USM, uh, tax, because years ago they used to put shoes together with tax, but now they use glue. Mm -hmm. But the D.B. Gertie company is in town, is still operating it's still in operating. town. still uh, operating. As one of the oldest businesses in Whitman, I believe mm -hmm. they're the uh, seventh generation. Mm -hmm. oh. uh, but they're, they're to the point where they don't supply tax. Who uses tax anymore? It's mm -hmm. kind of like everything else. But there are many industries that were in Whitman that are no longer in existence because of the larger shoe companies and stuff mm -hmm. have moved out and the shoe business went out of the country. Okay. So uh, we yeah. could take that up a little later if you want. Okay. And Marie, in terms of speaking of that, the building that you guys are using right now in hopes of creating a new museum is the historical society is managing it, right? Oh, That's sorry, correct. the historical society. <laughs> so, but the historical commission, you'll be the ones who organize it and? At this point, John has done it all. Right. <laughs> um, he is the one that has a lot of the memorabilia. Mm -hmm. He originally had a museum in the Commonwealth Shoe Building. Okay. But when it was sold, it was dismantled and put into storage until there was another spot available. Mm -hmm. So when the spot became available, John took everything out of storage and has established a place in his building for the museum to be reestablished. So we're pretty excited. Yeah, so am I. It's, it sounds like a great thing. And this will be something that the entire public can go to eventually? You want to? I'll take that. Uh, I think when I when I had the uh, museum in the Commonwealth Building, mm -hmm. um, it was really quite interesting. We opened it up in uh, 2002, mm -hmm. and we ran it for six years. Mm -hmm. But the uh, fifth graders, the teachers at the school, would put together a field trip, mm -hmm. their spring field trip, yeah. and they would bring them to the museum, and uh, the teachers put a, uh, uh, trying to figure the word, to find things in the museum. Okay. Oh, and like a scavenger hunt. Scavenger yeah. hunt, that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, and they, they, with that, and each student had to find their own thing. Mm -hmm. And while half of them were doing the scavenger lunch and having lunch, because we had a small, uh, an area there where we could do that, the other half of the fifth grades 
would go around town and see all the different uh, stones for the historic sites. And, and so that taught the kids what went on in Whitman. And then when they came to the museum, they could see what was produced in Whitman. Yeah, so. I wish I had seen that one. It sounds fascinating. It was. It was um, an all-day project Yeah. And uh, for the school day. And, and that, was, that was the whole thing, was teaching the kids in the town of Whitman what Whitman was about mm -hmm. many years ago. Yeah, and like I say, I am sorry I didn't know about it. Maybe um, this time, you know, maybe this show and maybe more stuff we do can actually publicize it more. Because I think if I had heard of it, heard of it I would have gone. <laughs> I didn't realize it was there. Yeah. But right, it was, I mean, we, we, have a, we had a lot of, uh, at that time, the historical society was well over 100 members. Mm -hmm. But when we went kind of uh, active, we went out of active, and, and the people in the town that were involved in it were, were all in their 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. And those were the people that knew the history of Whitman. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you listen to stories from them at mm -hmm. uh, every monthly meeting that they told, and you learned a little bit more. And it's sorry to say, but I mean, you're talking back in 2000, most of those people uh, uh, passed away now, yeah. which is a sorry thing. But uh, just about uh, six months ago, I reactivated and put in a paper to start the Historical Society up again so that they could help in putting the museum together. And uh, we had about 30 new people show up, mm -hmm. and younger people, and those oh, are the good. people that we need, because those are the people that are going to teach the kids 30 and 40 years from now mm -hmm. what we do, yeah. you know. So it's, it's, a, it's a big revolving thing. Okay. Yeah. Good. All right. Mary, sorry, Mary. Um, yeah, now, I see your book there. Is that some of the things you want to put into it, if we get it, if we have an historical site? Well, it, the book that I brought with me was actually published by the Harding Print Company, which John owns. But besides that, um, this original printing was in 1975, and then was reprinted again in 1985. Mm -hmm. The library has copies of it. They're $10 a piece. And inside is a wonderful history of Whitman. What we have where we came from. Mm -hmm. The whale plank on the Constitution was milled here and sent into Boston. Oh, that's fascinating. Um, we were one of the first militia to answer the call for the Civil War <laughs> for Lincoln. Wow. And they marched from here. And the reason that they're known as the first group to join was that they were told to meet at the State House. And truly, they were supposed to meet at the Boston Common. Mm -hmm. So they went directly to the State House and were pronounced the first militia oh, to I arrive. Yeah. So we do have lots and lots of wonderful history here. Mm -hmm. You'll see rocks. I don't know why we put up these rocks, because we laugh about the rock tour. Uh -huh. And if you go around the town of Whitman, um, at the intersection of Commercial and Washington Street, mm -hmm. there is a rock that recognizes the last homestead of the Wampatucks. Oh, okay. What else do we have? We have the Bell Foundry Rock. That's right by Diamond mm -hmm. Fuel. That's right by Diamond Fuel. Mm -hmm. We have... A little comfort is out uh, down the... Uh, Behind, behind the Hobart's Pond, Yep, that rock is there. But there are many. There's a rock where the Whitman house was. Exactly, the uh, August Whitman right. family mm -hmm. home. There's a plaque in front of the old Juvet building, which was the old yep. pet store right in the mm -hmm. center of town. That's when the militia yes, formed. Yes, in front of the old Annie's Clean Critters, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so there's lots of historical markers around the town. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. But it would be really great to, to bring it all into one place so that you could see all of it. It would be kind of neat to have a tour, too. Where you well, we've, <laughs> we've actually laughed about putting together a rock tour. Yeah. And I guess it was done years ago. Mm -hmm. And it was done for, I think, the fifth grade classes that John would bring into the museum. Mm -hmm. 
But we do have the paperwork for that, so that might yeah. be something we could start doing. That sounds like fun, yeah. Now, I understand the Cultural Council has the availability of some funds of a grant? Well, at the, at the State Cultural Council, they do have some grants available specifically for buildings. So hopefully if it was something that need to be needed to be restored somewhat, that um, we could apply for a grant like that, or, or the, the Historical Society could, as opposed to the Cultural Commission Committee. Um, and hopefully they would get it, you know? <laughs> and they, would, they have that money available, so. I think, I think that would be important, is not right now, because the museum is set up where it is, but what I've tried to do in the past six years is convince the authorities in the town to mm -hmm. find me a place to put the museum for a permanent location. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that because right now you could call it, it belongs to the Historical Society mm -hmm. and I've supported the whole thing. Right. But I'm only going to be around for so much longer. Okay. Well. So it <laughs> needs a permanent location where younger people can get involved in the Historical Society and run it. Mm -hmm. for years because other, other towns, almost every single other town has given buildings an old schoolhouse mm -hmm. or an old mm -hmm. library old homes, yeah. or, or an, old, an old building that the town doesn't really have a use for but it would make mm -hmm. a good museum and, and Whitman hasn't done that and, or found us a building to, to mm -hmm. do that mm -hmm. uh, and that's what it needs to be done in the next four or five years mm -hmm. so that we can set up the museum permanently. So it will be a town treasure. Yeah, it will mm -hmm. be. Yeah, no. um, you know what I was wondering? What does it actually entail when you're going to put the artifacts and everything together? Do you catalog them? And then, uh, you know, how do you, how do you keep track of what things you have and when, when, you, when they happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, every item that has been donated to the museum is given a number and mm -hmm. is, is put in a catalog of who gave it to us and when. Okay. Um, so, and any item that is given to the museum, if the party that gave it to us would like to have it back, mm -hmm. they're welcome to get it back. Okay. They're putting the stuff on, on loan permanently, mm -hmm. I mean, right. in most cases. Right. I've had a couple of people, that's why I've had to start the museum up again, mm -hmm. is because it, that people have called me and say, I gave you the pictures, and I'd like to see them so other people can see them. And that's mm -hmm. why I'm op opening the museum again, is that so we don't lose the stuff that people want to take it back because it's taken us 10, 12 years to accumulate all of this material. And uh, actually the Dyer Memorial Library in Abington mm -hmm. has a tremendous amount of uh, Whitman historical. They do, they're amazing. Yeah, and they're, they are a full-time uh, crew up there where they, everything is category, but nothing is really on display. Mm -hmm. If you want to go up and learn something about the history of Whitman, they will dig it out for you. They have it in the back, mm -hmm. pictures and everything else. So you could learn a lot of research material up there, mm -hmm. but to go in and look at it, right. it's, it's not available. So this is why our museum is open to everything and uh, the kids can see it. You know, where, where the blacksmith shop was, where the spinning wheel was. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking about the major fires in town now. We have yeah. pictures of it, the, the toll house. The toll house. Mm -hmm. You know, the Dyer School, the mm -hmm. GAR Hall. Wow. And, yep. and where it was, you, you don't really understand that the blacksmith shop was a, a, a big restaurant yeah. that mm -hmm. burned, and now it's come on farms. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. The toll house was a great west restaurant, and that burned. Mm. Now it's Wendy's. Wendy's. I never had a chance to go there, I know. Yes. Yeah. You know, and, and the uh, GAR Hall mm -hmm. was near the park, and that's where the senior center Seven. is. Okay. So, I mean, those are the type of things that our museum will show. A uh, picture of the GAR Hall, a picture of the GAR Hall yeah. burning, and what is there now. In mm -hmm. fact, there is a bo another book coming out, uh, two gentlemen from Hanover, uh, it's in print right now, Arcadia Publishing. Mm -hmm. It's called Then and Now. Mm -hmm. uh, so they could take a picture of the Toll House and a picture of Wendy's and they'll be side by side. Oh, mm -hmm. nice. So that book is in publication right now. So uh, yeah, that, that should be good. out in the next uh, few months. Now, Marie, you were telling me earlier that the Historical Commission is starting to use Facebook more. So. 
Yes, to kind of we, get their word out? we established a Facebook page a couple of years ago, but I really hadn't done a lot with it. Um, like most commissions, societies, other groups in this area, mm -hmm. Families are so busy in this day and age working and trying to support a family and trying to fulfill parental needs and everything else. Mm -hmm. They're not joining things the way some of us older people did. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of the groups in town have started to suffer mm -hmm. from this way of life. Yeah, I was just thinking that, I don't know if this is at all possible, but I wonder if we could blend committees. I don't know if the selectmen or anybody would let us do that because the cultural council is actually very small too and we kind of have trouble making sure we have a quorum. Uh, well, that we was, yeah. that's one of the things we've been struggling with also. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons that I agreed to do this mm -hmm. was to get the word out there that, you know, we do have an amazing, if you have an idea of the history of this little sleepy town that we live in, mm -hmm. come and join us. We're not yeah. asking for a lot of time. We're not mm -hmm. asking for your money. <laughs> we meet once a month mm -hmm. and we try to generate interest. Yeah. Um, do you know about all the historical things? Do you know that we have these things? Do you know um, one of the things that strikes me is when the Augustus Whitman family home was taken down. Ned and Mary Alice Kirby were building a home on Harvard Street. Okay. And Mary Alice said, I've always loved the staircase in that house. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how it happened, but they loaded it in the back of a pickup <laughs> truck and it left Washington Street. Mm -hmm and found its way down to Harvard Street and now exists in Mary Alice Kirby's house. And that, that was a special stairway because it was a spiral stairwell. It mm -hmm. wasn't a straight stairwell up, and that's why Mary Alice wanted it. Yeah. Yeah. And so, the people that didn't know who Augustus Woman Whitman was, okay, uh, older people in town do know it, but he was the gentleman that uh, donated the land for the Whitman Park. Oh, okay. okay. And there were a couple of other names when we were incorporated back in 1876. There were a couple of other names thrown out there, but the town voted that the town would now be called Whitman. Mm -hmm. It was called Little Comfort at one point. Well, time, wasn't at it? one point it was called Little Comfort, and then we were known as South Abington. Oh, okay. And Rockland, Abington, and Whitman all sort of originated together. Mm -hmm. and then we're split up into three separate communities. So it's, it's been an interesting history. Mm -hmm. And uh, so do you think building a website would be a good idea? Is that? Well, we have the Facebook page. Um, we got Josh McNeil, the town IT specialist, mm -hmm. together the other day, and I think we have a pretty good feeling for what we can get out there on the web. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be one of our next goals, is yeah. to get the information out there and hopefully to get people joining us yeah, I think in the Historic um, Commission. What, what would you like to see, John, or, or both of you, uh, from the town in terms of participation in creating this museum? I mean, do you think there are people out there who still have artifacts and books and things that are pertinent? Oh, that, um, oh yeah, very, very much so. Uh, what, what happens when you get artifacts like that is is uh, when you get older people in their 70s or 80s that have lived in town all their lives and, and they get a book like this green book right here and mm -hmm. they'll stick it up in the attic, they read it all through a couple times and it ends up in their attic with a lot of other artifacts. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then that couple you know, had a very good life and they pass on mm -hmm. and it's up to the kids to clean out the house. Uh -huh. and, and there are so many things that people save in, in things and you put it out there saying that uh, if you don't want it, then drop it off at Hardic Print. Yeah. And we'll look at it 
And if we either have duplicates or don't want it, we'll throw it away. Mm -hmm. But don't throw it away throw because it, away. it might be nothing to you, mm -hmm. but very important to somebody else. So that, that's how basically we get all of the stuff. And then when we get it, we do the same thing. Now, when we get things, um, sometimes we get like persons listed books and mm -hmm. poll books and real estate tax books from dating back in the 1800s, early 1900s. So we keep those on file mm -hmm. in the Whitman Historical Commission office. We're mm -hmm. on the second floor of the town hall. If we have one already, I will then pass them on. There's a historical room at the library. Yes, okay. They will sometimes pass them on to John. Sometimes we pass them on to the Dyer Memorial. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, Michael Ganshert, who works in the clerk's office in the town hall, and myself, mm -hmm. would just ask to be trustees of the, of the Dyer Public Library. Oh, so excellent. we are now on the board there. <laughs> wow, okay. So history is alive and living in Whitman. And come share it with us. I, know. I, I would love to see a museum. So hopefully that really is in our future in the next few years. Oh yeah, well I, I would venture to say I've got to get on the stick here. and <laughs> I would say that I'll have the and I was thinking about it, I looked at the date that I opened up the first museum was April 2nd in 2000. Mm -hmm. uh, I could conceivably open this one by April 2nd. This year? Yeah. Wow. Okay, John. Oh, wow, okay. What can we, as members of these groups and townspeople, do to help you? What can we do to participate? Well, a lot of things now, I, We've got the uh, display cases all in place, and what we did is sort the stuff out. Uh, most of the stuff I had stored at the armory mm -hmm. uh, for the past few years, and most of it is out now. I have stuff in my trailer truck in my backyard, and most of that is home over here now. And uh, I have one person that shows up once a week, uh, Eunice, mm -hmm. and uh, she curated my, uh, my other one. A okay. uh, very efficient lady, and she has distributed the stuff. And what we did is we take a display case, and we make it the police and fire department. Mm -hmm. And we put everything to do with the police and fire in that case. Okay. And then we got a corner that's all school related mm -hmm. material, and another corner is all churches. Mm -hmm. Another corner that's all businesses. Mm -hmm. Another one is all shoe museums. Uh, also, what we were going to have this year is Clarence Whitney when he sold King's Castle. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. okay. That was a wonderful place. That I, was really adorable, yeah. I, I went up and cut the dragon's head off <laughs> and had the dragon's head. Oh, I love it. But Clarence, yeah. in his spare time after he retired, made a 6 by 12 uh, replica of the park. Did he? Yeah. And that is going to be in the museum. <gasps> Oh, I love it. Very yeah, I nice. love it. The, the uh, cable did a series on it and has a tape on that, which because it's in a cellar now down in Pine Hills. I've got to go get it. But that that's coming. And as far, when he called a night, and I got a phone call. Somebody said that they had something, and I went over to find out it was one of the cars on one of the rides. Oh. Mm -hmm. So we're going to hang that from the ceiling. Every once in a while, you used to drive around town and see some of the little buildings that were there. Oh yeah, they, that were sold that at was the auction. So neat. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Most of them are rotted out. I, I've had calls to come and get a couple of those, but most of them all rotted out. So what can we, as the citizens, do? Well, I'm going to have to, like, to take the churches, for instance. Uh, every church in town has had a different steeple on it. Yes, okay. they have. Right. So, to have take the. Uh, well, take the Baptist Church. That's the one that's changed a lot. Mm -hmm. You take it when it was back in the. Is that the one on Washington Street? Where the yes. pines yeah. are right, okay. right yeah. now. Uh, that's had two steeple, uh, steeples in, on mm -hmm. it, or maybe three even. Mm -hmm. But have a picture of each one mm -hmm. and a date roughly of when that steeple was changed, when that building changed, and then it was changed eventually into apartments. Mm -hmm. 
Then you have another church here that's uh, right next door here. Mm -hmm. I believe it's a fitness center. It used to be Whitman wallpaper and paint on the oh, end of okay. the yes. here. Mm -hmm. That was a church. Wow. In well, fact, when they built those apartments, they incorporated some of the stained glass windows in into the church, apartments. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've yeah. never been in there. They sound like really nice. Yeah, they're very neat. Yeah. They're yeah. amazing mm -hmm. apartments. Yeah, because when that Bostonian owned the factory, mm -hmm. they bought the church and they added on to their factory to the back of the church and then built three, four, two floors right through the middle of it. So it became part of the factory. Yeah. yeah. But eventually, uh, years ago, that was the church. And the two stained glass windows is, uh, actually, I got those out of the Baptist church mm -hmm. when they were getting rid of all the stuff. And I convinced the gentleman that was doing the renovations on Bostonian to put them in the church and they're on the Oh, outside. okay, so those didn't come from the church that was there. No, they came, those from, came the from the Baptist church. Baptist church. Okay. They, they were the ones that were in the steeple that was changed years ago. Oh, okay. Okay. And All right, now I know more about Anybody that goes by on South Avenue here looks at those two windows, those are stained glass windows from the Baptist church. Yeah. So. That's nice. Well, I'm really looking forward to this. I think it's going to be incredible. Yeah. And I hope... Um, when it gets underway, we can have a discussion like this again about what it's like now, now that it's open, you know, and hopefully, um, I, I really hope we encourage more people to go because it, it is very worthwhile and very educational. Absolutely. You know, and, um, um, we are certainly, as the Historical Commission, if you bring anything into the town hall mm -hmm. that the family no longer cares for, mm -hmm. please bring it in. We will get it to the places that they need to get to. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have a lot of stuff on loan to John. Yeah. You know what I am? And we have more stuff that yeah. we'd love to show. Mm -hmm. And this would be a perfect venue. You yeah, know what I, I really need? And, and I haven't had any book. That book was, we printed that one in 85. Mm -hmm. But I also printed a book with a red cover on it in 75. Mm -hmm. And I don't have any more of them. And there's oh, tons of them in town. Oh, I would mm -hmm. love, yeah, if and, people and have what, them. What it is, if, if I could get people to give them to the museum, I resell those books because this book was a more uh, picture-orientated book, mm -hmm. where the red book was more of a written history. Mm -hmm. There's more history in that book. So the two books are basically the same, but one is a written history, one is a picture history. And then, of course, there's one that was put out about f back in 2000, also was put out by Arcadia Publishing. I still have new copies of those. I sell those all the time. That's the smaller book, That's the brown That's the six by cover. nine book, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay, so we're getting near the end, though. Um, what would you like to tell everybody one more time about how to contact you and bring you um, anything they might have, pictures or artifacts or anything like that? Where, where can they um, contact you or...? On Facebook or? I think the best way to contact me would be on Facebook. Okay. Um, either under the Whitman Historical Commission or uh, my own Facebook page is fine. I'm Marie, listed as Marie Fleming Layler. Okay. And I certainly, if you have any questions, anything that anybody needs to ask, can be asked there and I will get back to them. John. Well, hopefully uh, when the museum goes, one of the gentlemen that signed the Historical Society is a computer expert, and he's supposedly going to make the museum a web page. Oh, okay. So that should happen. He was going to get some computers to do that. Uh, so hopefully that will happen. But if anybody has anything that they would like to donate, to either bring them to the commission at the town hall or bring them to Harding Print. And uh, which a lot of stuff comes almost weekly. I get something, a picture, a program book. It's amazing. Yeah. And, okay. and uh, I, I have a lot of people out of state contact me too. Uh, so that any, anybody that has anything, the, the best is to bring it to Harding Print. Okay. We're, we're that sounds great. Located in the backside of Colburg Boulevard. <laughs> All right. Okay. I meant to ask you that too. Okay. So Colburg Boulevard. And. Um, all right, so we have to wrap up now, but thank you so much for being here. I'm so looking forward to this museum, and I hope we do get to get, get, to get together and talk again at some other point. But for now, I'd just like to thank everybody from Whitman & Hanson for watching us tonight, and um, have a good evening. <laughs>